There is no question that William Shakespeare is the greatest writer in history. From The Tempest to Hamlet, he is amazing. But is Shakespeare's name actually spelled and pronounced correctly? On June 12th, William Shakespeare signed his first document, followed by five more signatures in later years. What is interesting about the six signatures Shakespeare left behind is none of them were the same. The spelling was different. His six signatures read William Shakp, William Shakespeare, W. M. Shakespeare, William Shakespeare, William Shakespeare, and by me, William Shakespeare. The spelling of William stayed relatively the same. However, his last name, Shakespeare, is spelled many different ways. After Shakespeare died on April 23, 1616, his editors spelled his name in various different ways. The most common way the editor spelled it was Shakespeare. In the 18th century, his last name was spelled Shakespeare without an E. In the 19th century, his name was spelled Shakespeare with an E. It was not until the late 20th century when editors finally decided it should be Shakespeare with an E. However, in different countries, there are various amounts of spellings. William spelled it Shakespeare on most documents. The most common ways that are seen today are Shakespeare and Shakespeare. Famous 18th century publishers like Edmund Malone and George Stevens spelled William's last name like Shakespeare on famous publications. Both Edmund and George later examined William's will. They believed it to be spelled Shakespeare. They also acknowledged that the signature is very difficult to read. Later, graphology specialists closely studied the signature on his will and believed it to be spelled and pronounced Shakespeare. John Pickerton believed that William's last name should be spelled Shakespeare as he believed because it was traced by his own poet's hand in his signatures. Isaac Disraeli believed that his name is spelled Shakespeare. He claims that the spelling corresponds with the correct pronunciation. He believed it was meant to be pronounced Shakespeare, not Shakespeare. It is clear that William Shakespeare's last name can be spelled and pronounced in different ways. We also know that all Shakespeare's signatures are different from each other. Whether his name is spelled or pronounced differently, we know William Shakespeare was important in history for writers and poets. The Droeshout engraving was a portrait of William Shakespeare engraved by Martin Droeshout. The purpose of this piece was to serve as the title piece for the first folio collection of Shakespeare's plays published in 1623. Martin Droeshout sourced the engraving off of the flower portrait. The flower portrait had been commonly used on covers of Shakespeare's plays. The flower portrait had been surrounded by controversy for several years. Its author is unknown, but the name originates from the flower family. The previous owners who had donated the piece to the Shakespeare Memorial Theater at the end of the 19th century. The Droeshout engraving came in two different states, printed from the same plate by Martin Droeshout. There were only four copies of the original state, and these printings were most likely made so that Droeshout could identify any alterations that needed to be made, like heavier shadows or size proportions. Martin Droeshout made these engravings in London between 1623 and 1632. Like the flower portrait, the Droeshout engraving was surrounded by controversy and followed with several conspiracy theories. When you first look at an image of the Droeshout engraving, it may or may not look a little off to you. However, as you look more into the image, many features of Shakespeare seem to be a little off. There have been many conspiracy theories about the Droeshout engraving. Many proponents of the Shakespeare authorship question believe that someone other than Shakespeare was the author of his plays attributed to him. Some believe that the Droeshout engraving was designed in a way to make him look ugly with his uneven hair or his large forehead. Some suggest that he is wearing a mask to cover a hidden author that could have written the plays. The line created by the gap between the modeling shadow and the jawline has been used to suggest that it is a mask. It appears in the engraving that William Shakespeare's head is unproportional to his body, and with no apparent neck, it creates an effect that shows his head is floating above his body. Many scholars blame Martin Droeshout for the odd proportions and ugly features, but they were not forced to accept the engraving to be the cover of the first folio. However, since they accepted the engraving, it shows that they were satisfied with the final product. The engraving also shows Shakespeare with two left hands. Taylors believe that the straight trim on the left side belongs to the garment back. Conspiracy theories believe that his right arm belonged to someone else writing the plays. The Droeshout engraving was an odd piece constructed by Martin Droeshout that served as the cover for the first folio. Many people believe that Martin Droeshout made Shakespeare look this way because he was not the actual author of his famous plays. 
I disagree with the people who think this way. At first glance, it's hard to notice that some things may be off, which could have just been unnoticed mistakes by Drochout. However, when looking at other engravings made by Martin Drochout, the proportions are all correct and nothing seems to be off about any of his pieces. For example, in this engraving of John Halson created by Drochout, all the details look to be correct. Therefore, it is unknown whether the details of the engraving were intentional or a mistake. Charles Grinion was a British engraver and draughtsman. He was born in London to refugees on October 25th. He attended the Hubert Francois Gravelot School for his good education. He was well known for his engravings and sketches. His work is preserved in various museums. One specific portrait that he sketched was of Shakespeare and his monument. In the sketch, you can see Shakespeare holding a bag of grain. Many wonder if the man in the sketch is actually Shakespeare, and why would he be holding a bag of grain? There is no record of the man in the photo being Shakespeare, but we can infer that the man is Shakespeare because it was on his monument. The significance of Shakespeare holding a bag of grain is to ensure that his family and neighbors would not starve if there was a bad harvest. In the 16th century, grain was one of the most expensive crops available for purchase, mainly because grain can be used to make many foods, such as bread or rice. Due to grain being so expensive, there was a huge profit in harvesting it. The grain may signify a good harvest for more money to provide for themselves. What is common with these three scenarios is that each are surrounded by controversy. These three instances add up, which makes some conspiracy theorists believe that Shakespeare may not have been the author of all of his famous plays, and maybe Shakespeare's name is not really Shakespeare.